Well, let's go way back in time, Paul Rosen. You remember back in 1992 when Bill Clinton was campaigning for his first term in office, he used to go on jogs on occasion. He would go out running with the press in tow, and counterintuitively, he would stop during his exercise at McDonald's. He'd swing in and get himself a Big Mac, maybe. He was a big fan of Big Macs and maybe a soft drink. Well, as a result, partially as a result of that, no doubt, in 2004, Bill Clinton had quadruple heart bypass surgery, and now he identifies himself as a vegan. He's one of millions of Americans who have suffered from heart disease of one sort or another. And that's one of our topics this morning on Health Matters with Paul Rosen. We're going to focus on the heart because heart disease remains one of the leading causes of death, even after 80 years, leaving experts wringing their hands for a solution. The problem is that the solution is so close, but they're too invested in the wrong theory to see it. And here's a hint, dietary cholesterol isn't evil. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, that's a bulletin, we'll have to expand <laughs> on that. Plus the surprise best foods for heart. Uh, and then we'll hear uh, from two of my patients who were kind enough to, to, uh, to do interviews, uh, Dennis and Don, both of whom had some cardiovascular strain. So that'll be interesting. Should we whip right into it? Oh, I think we should whip or, or, right or into do, it. Or do you but, have a question? <laughs> uh, well, I have a point to make. Speaking oh. of good foods for heart and going back to the Bill Clinton angle, in 2013, McDonald's announced they were going to include in their menus more side salads and even fruit. And guess who endorsed that initiative? Why, ex-president Bill Clinton stepped forward and said, thank you, McDonald's, for making Americans healthier. What, what do you think of that, Paul, of that particular Well, Well, thing? I... The, I mean, as far as serving a broader spectrum of the public, that's it's kind of a smart move, but it's based on some false understanding. Well, that's, that's the point I hope there you would are, get to. There are a small class of folks based on their metabolism and their genetic makeup that definitely do better with less meat. There's no doubt about that. But saturated fat, is essential for life. It's essential. And if you replace all of your saturated fat sources with vegan sources, and you aren't that person who does well with primarily vegetables, ultimately, you're simply going to wear out faster and start experiencing different types of uh, of issues. So is the problem, say, with, uh, with a Big Mac, I guess I'll focus on that, is the problem there not so much the beef in it, but the processing that preserves that beef and all the other stuff they have on there that makes it unique tasting? It is not, it, it is not the beef per se, although the, the, the beef that McDonald's uses is not beef that I would promote. Meat, meat is the, does contain more st stuff in it that you would not necessarily want to ingest. And so you want to limit that stuff. And to do that, you want to choose organic uh, pasture raised sources for your meat, regardless of what that meat is, whether it's beef or chicken or pork or whatever. But there is absolutely, positively, without a doubt, no inherent evil about meat. There just isn't. I want to remind everybody, too, that podcast editions of this show are available at acunatural.com, acunatural.com. Go there, click on the podcast tab. Also on Facebook, you can hear audio from this show. Type in Paul J. Rosen, and you'll get that. And on YouTube, we are on YouTube, Paul J. Rosen. Type that in, or Health Matters, and you'll get some video to go with your audio and good information. That's what's more important, more than anything. So are these among the reasons, Paul, the fact that one we're other, eating? One other, uh, 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 acunatural.com is, uh, is the office Facebook and also website. 
peckinetural.com. Right. There's a lot of good information there in addition to the audio. So you can't yeah. lose with acunatural.com. Anyway, are we as Americans, Paul, just eating more junk food and eating more junk in general? I guess that's that's a hard yes. Softballs that's, a, that's, a, that's a hard yes on that one. Yeah, but on, but yes. on the other hand, is that why we're suffering from so much heart disease and so many of us are getting diabetes at all ages of our lives? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's, that's both true diabetes for sure. But all of this, this uh, characterization of consumption of cholesterol being bad for you was based on science that was politically driven, not, not actually factual. Way back in the 1950s, uh, Ansel Keys is the, is the guy. So what and, would the politics and, and, be of that? Why would anybody stand to gain politically or economically from saying that cholesterol is bad for us? Well, um, take the example of a scientist who wins the Nobel Prize versus one that doesn't. Is there any so economic somebody, advantage? Sure, sure. He could well, derive a, a, an obvious economic advantage, first yeah. from the payout from the Nobel Committee. <laughs> yeah, and there's, there's nothing, that. and there's nothing wrong with that per se, but we as consumers need to understand that politics is a blood sport. And um, it's, it's one that, uh, you know, will never go away. As long as you have two people in a room, there's politics, but you have to understand that politics uh, more often than not drives the discussion. And the more politics involved in discussions of fact, the more possibilities for things to go awry. And that's what happened back in the 50s. It turns out, and, and based on the FDA's changing the dietary guidelines back in 2015, that there is no recommendation or restriction with respect to the consumption of fat anymore because the, the science doesn't back the, so, you know, the, the, the advice. I'm, I'm looking for the right words. Well, we've come to doesn't a better, back the advice we've come to a better, eating, a, we've come to a better understanding about fat and fat consumption is what I'm hearing. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Because, because of, you know, people actually, wanting to know for real, not necessarily an ax to grind. Wherever you find an ax to grind, that's what you have to investigate for any factual anything as a human being on planet earth in any culture. So by ax to grind, you mean somebody has an agenda and they're putting yes. that agenda out there. And ax cholesterol to grind is the same thing as agenda. Cholesterol Back is a good example of that. Back in the 50s, you say somebody found it to their advantage to plant the idea that cholesterol is bad for us. And that, by the way, is then a myth that we bought into for decades. And it's still out there, obviously. Well, so did corporate America. Right? Right. Because, because if, if, if a politically driven uh, uh, proclamation it becomes quote unquote accepted, even not based on real evidence, then the whole culture tends to, to shift, which is exactly what happened. And the production of uh, things like uh, vegetable oils and, and synthetic fats, hydrogenated fats, um, various types of, of foods, low fat, diet foods and things like this, you know, by, by extracting oil or, or, or fat from, from the, from the food, you know, for what, I mean, since, since the fifties, we're talking, uh, you know, maybe, maybe 50 years at least. Well, 60 more likely coming up on 70. So we're, yeah. we're, 
what, what you're hearing or what I'm hearing from what you're saying there, Paul, is that these no fat foods have become marketed or have come to be marketed as a means of making yourself healthier when, in fact, you should include fat in your food to make yourself as good as you possibly can be. I mean, the very simple statistics of heart disease themselves and the consumption of fat is that although uh, saturated fat was pulled out of the diet, right, and vegetable fats and, and, and hydrogenated fats were introduced, right, the incidence of heart disease went up. So what about our friend Bill Clinton? He says he's a vegan now. Is that going to improve his chances of living longer and being better? He's lost a ton of weight, you've noticed over the years. Well, he's a course, lot that's, thinner than he was back in the day. Th th that's an advantage. I mean, is it, it and of course he's if he's a vegetarian, he's probably not eating a ton of refined and processed foods either. Right. So that leads to the healthy weight loss that most of Ex us would want. Exactly. Exactly. So um and, and, and he's, he's probably eating less sugar as well, because in the processed and refined foods, there is a huge amount of sugar. All you have to do is read the labels, folks. All you got to do is read the labels. That's something to do. And something else you can do to make yourself healthier is go to acunatural.com any old time, 24-7. Lots of health information there. You can also hear podcast editions of this show at acunatural.com. So let's personalize this a little bit, Paul. I've lost a ton of weight during the pandemic, you may have noticed. Can you see my thin, cadaverous self in your camera there? It's We're doing this on Zoom, by the way. So <laughs> we have a visual element to the recording of the show. Yeah, and you can see it on YouTube um, if you want to. <laughs> well, there's that. The point I'm making, though, is uh, I tend to eat... Your weight loss. Yeah, my, my weight loss. I've lost yeah. about 10 pounds. I'm, I'm about 5'10", 155 usually. So I'm not a guy who can spare a lot of weight. But I've noticed my clothes are kind of hanging off me. Yeah. And I wonder if that is, you know, just I'm working a lot of hours. I, I have a certain amount of stress, as everybody does on the job. My eating has been more sporadic than it has been, you know, in years past. I, I don't have meals on a regular basis. In other words, I don't sit down at four o'clock every day for, for dinner or six o'clock or whatever it should be. I'm kind of grabbing on the go all the time. Could that well, be a contributing go. factor? You just hit it. You, of all the information you gave me, you just hit it. Grabbing on the go. This is not a way, this is not part of a lifestyle, which... Uh, to which the body endears itself. So is it the irregular nature of meal planning? Of yes. course, what, what, what we have at our meals counts. Yes, it also, of course. It also what, matters what you put in not... your mouth is, is, is pretty much the ball game. But if what you put in your mouth is intermittent and you're really not taking the time to actually sit down and uh, you know, have a meal, that's a contributing factor. So for many Americans, uh, could that also be a contributing factor Huge. to heart disease? Huge. You know, eating on the run. Yeah. Which Absolutely. is not to imply that I think I'm a, a candidate for heart disease, but I just noticed some physical well, changes lately. And, and maybe that's something we should all be cognizant of. If we, if we see things happening with our bodies, I think that's nature cluing us into the fact that we need to change our habits. Well, because I actually work with people who have heart disease and in uh, formulating a personalized nutritional healing program and seeing the results of those people who actually follow the program and do it, then, you know, nutrition is the key. Nutrition is absolutely the key for anyone who is on medication for high blood pressure or high cholesterol or diabetes or anything else for that matter. And you're on it because of the uh, uh, chronic nature of some symptom that is not forced upon you by, say, an accident or uh, you know a surgery like removal of an organ or a gland. Right. Most people who have high blood pressure, it occurs chronically. Most people who have diabetes, it's type two that occurs chronically, uh, and. Uh, so the, these things are completely addressable. 
They're completely addressable. So besides weight loss and warning signs like that, are there other things we should be looking for as symptoms? Well, I wanted may... to tell you a story about weight loss because really weight and weight loss, uh, and, uh, unless you're you know, radically outside the boundaries of reasonability, you know, 50, 100 pounds overweight for you know, your mass, your, your body structure, um, weight is, is, is not the issue. What you eat is the issue. And most people, when they stop eating sugar and when they uh, eliminate the refined and processed foods, and that includes the oils, when they eliminate much of the vegetable oils, and I'm talking about corn or safflower or uh, uh, what's the other one? <laughs> I can't. I, I, I can't think of it off the top of my head. Well, these are oils that are prominent in many of the foods we eat. I'm not talking I'm about hearing. olive oil. Okay. Olive oil is good? Yeah. Okay. Olive oils. But there are certain oils that are processed and not they're, good for they're us. They're in all, all processed, you know, all pre-prepared foods. Um, canola is the one that, yeah. You avoid canola like the plague, whether it's organic or, or not. And when, when you do that, you, you change... You, you know, you start eating in concert with the way the, the, the body has evolved. And all of a sudden you notice, oh my gosh, I'm dropping some excess weight. Most of that is toxic water that you've accumulated uh, within a body that's no longer functioning at optimum levels. But I wanted to tell a story about a patient with respect to weight uh, individual that I've worked with for a long time, a slender man, not particularly tall, probably five, five, seven, five, eight. And he ha has been chronically ill for a very long time. Now, he came to me, I gave him his personalized nutritional healing program. He's done very well on it. He's seen a dramatic improvement in his health, but recently he started to see some, some weight loss and became very concerned. And because of his history, I was concerned about it as well, but I was just simply observing. And he'd been talking about it for some time, but he came in this past week and mentioned the weight again. And I asked him, now I know you lost you know, eight, nine pounds. Has it stabilized? I asked him. And he said, yes. He said, I haven't lost anymore, but I haven't gained any back. And, and he said it in a way that he was very concerned about. But his weight had stabilized. That's a very critical factor, stabilized. And then he said something else, which was surprising. He said, but I haven't felt this good in a long time. So is weight the issue? No, it's not. And this is true for many people. Right? What we weigh, whether, it's, whether, whether it seems a little excess or seems a little deficient, is, is not the issue. Especially if you can say to yourself, well, I feel better than I felt in some time. And that's what happens when you're on your own nutritional healing program. There are, I can count on one hand in, in almost the 27 plus years where people who, who came, got evaluated, found out precisely what they should be eating, ate that, took the supplements to address the environmental obstructions, and didn't experience what my, the, this individual that I just talked about experienced. That's how, that's how fundamental and how effective what we do is. It's, it's pretty amazing. It is. I think it's axiomatic to say, too, that weight loss will be good for some, maybe not so much for others, and weight gain may be desirable for, for some people. Is that right? Precisely. Precisely. Weight is, is, it can be an issue, but it's rarely the issue when it comes to, to feeling good and good health. At least that's what I find anyway.
Well, that's that's good sound advice. You can find more of that at acunatural.com, acunatural.com. Click on the podcast tab to hear podcast editions of Health Matters with Paul Rosen, also on YouTube and Facebook. If, if you're tired of taking supplements and not knowing whether or not they work, and they aren't working if you feel, if you have a chronic symptom of some sort, they are not working. And they're definitely not working if you're on medications and uh, relying on medications for some normalcy of function. There is a solution. There really is, truly is. But you have to be willing to make significant lifestyle changes. And then a different door opens up, uh, a completely different skyline, and you, you, you begin to experience what you thought you should have experienced all along. And you, you see that your supplements are working and you see that the diet that you're on is actually working for you, not just with respect to weight loss, as I indicated earlier, but actually with respect to the quality of your energy, the quality of your ability to, to think and be aware, and the quality of minimizing any chronic symptom at all. It's really cool. It's really cool. But you have to be willing to make the lifestyle change, not just any lifestyle change, but a lifestyle change uh, that uh, is reflective of your individual body's needs. And of course, to do that, you have to have a way to be able to assess them. And blood work and skin tests and hair tests and, and saliva tests and all those tests will not give you the, the, the key to unlocking what, what is yours to experience. A couple and that of points. is... A couple of points, Paul. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, please continue your thought there. I, no, I, thought, I thought you were done with your thought, but apparently not. One is do this before like ex-president Clinton, you have a quadruple heart bypass surgery. It might be nice to get on top of things before that becomes necessary. And well, the second I think point, you're saying that, I think you're saying that uh, sarcastically. <laughs> well, maybe somewhat. Yeah. I mean, maybe, yes. Maybe the answer a, is yes, of course. Yeah. Maybe in before a dry, walls, sarcastic Before the walls manner. tumble down. Before the walls tumbled down? Yeah, I think it would be a good idea to do something. <laughs> well, yeah, and there's this other point, too, about diabetes just taking off in the country. I realize in a time of a pandemic, our attention is focused maybe on that as opposed to all our other health issues. But type 2 diabetes in particular is just exploding. And I, it's I don't totally think... resolvable. For most every individual who's experiencing type 2 diabetes, diabetes it is completely resolvable. By diet, I assume, by improving your diet. Well, not just diet. There are other issues, right? I've described two wings of the bird. For any nutritional healing program out there, if you're not addressing both wings of the bird, that is one, nutritional deficiencies, and the other, environmental obstructions, then you're not going to be uh, as successful as you could be. Environmental obstructions include what's in your home, what's in your, chemicals, what's in your place of business. chemicals food sensitivities, uh, metal accumulation in various parts of the body, ongoing immune challenges, be they viruses, bacteria, parasites, fungus and yeast, low grade, high grade. Um, yeah, if you're not addressing those factors, then just taking supplements will simply not work the way you would hope they would. And, that, yeah. and, that's, and you can take that to the bank. Yeah, the supplements seem to be, I mean, I suppose that's a whole different conversation. I, I suppose they serve some benefit. But on the other hand, don't supplements act adversely sometimes with medications, as you indicated a few minutes ago? Uh, not food-based supplements. Okay. All right. But you're herbs, talking about- Herbs okay. or herbal right. supplements might, might interact poorly with, with uh, some medications. Um, homeopathics won't. Uh, interact poorly. Uh, so, so yeah, the supplement, if you're asking me, does the type of supplement, does the, the, uh, where it comes from and how it's put together count? You, you bet. 
You bet. Well, I think totally. many, I, I don't think many are, are necessarily 100% aware of that. They just hear that supplements are good, so they grab a fistful of supplements. Yeah, no, no. I mean, if you're, just, if you're just pulling supplements off the counter, your, your pharmacy or even your organic, your, your organic uh, a food store or whatever, the likelihood that those supplements are going to do you some good is low. So if you'd like to know more about that, about our topics at hand, maybe especially what supplements may or may not be best for you, you can always write to Paul directly too. Don't forget, get healthy at acunatural.com. Get healthy at acunatural.com. Acunatural.com is the website where tons of good information is available. Click on the podcast tab and you'll hear podcast editions of this show. And also you can find archives of past shows on YouTube and on Facebook. By the way, um, the things that I'm saying, folks, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not just talking from my armpit here. The things that I'm saying are things that I can prove to you. I can actually show you that the principles that I'm working with and I'm sharing with you are factually based, effective strategies. Actually, Paul, if you could talk from your armpit like a ventriloquist, I would be highly impressed. Hello. I would think, yeah, How maybe are you? it's time to Remember, contact cholesterol. Yeah. Don't do that. Not... Don't, oh, don't, okay. I take that back. Maybe, maybe <laughs> we can save that back and save that. You can for take the... that out of the tape. <laughs> yeah. No, we're going to leave that right there. <laughs> maybe the tonight show is auditioning or something. Yeah. Right. For a really big shoe. I wear a size 12. Is that a big shoe? Uh, you just gave up your age with the Ed Sullivan reference. And by the way, he never said really big shoe. I know. That's the, that's the Ed Sullivan imitators who said that. I know. When we imitate Ed Sullivan, know, we're not imitating him. We're imitating the guys who imitated him 60 and, years and, ago. And isn't, isn't that the way it goes? And why would we think that other types of things like that are actually for, really happened? Well, it's kind of like Nixon, too. He did say, I am not a crook, but he didn't say, well, I am not a crook. Right. He, he, didn't he never said that, his, but that's, right. that, that's yeah. how the imitators say it. So yeah. there you go. Well, there you go. That is the definition of a tangent. Song. That is the definition of a, a tangential thought right there. Maybe we so, should so focus me, on. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, you know, we're going to want to get to Don and we're going to want to uh, 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 get to Dennis. Uh, but but I want to I, I want to bust a, another couple of myths. We talked about cholesterol. Cholesterol is not bad. And anyway, uh, with respect to consumption of cholesterol, only 20 percent of the cholesterol uh, in, in your in your body even in your bloodstream, comes from diet. 75% is made by the liver. That's how important cholesterol is to uh, body, a proper and normal bodily function. Another myth, cholesterol is caused by what you eat. I think I just busted that one. Um, and of course now, uh, even in the new gui gui uh, dietary guidelines, eggs, oh my gosh, eggs are finally accepted as a healthy, and egg yolks as a healthy food. Uh, butter should be, butter is one of the healthiest foods that, that you can eat. We talked about animal fats and red meat, um, whole unpasteurized dairy, uh, even bacon. Uh, you can find bacon nowadays in the stores that isn't made with a sweetener and isn't made with nitrites or nitrates, and is, is raised on uh, healthy foods, and of course, pastured. Um, everyone's cholesterol level should be the same. In other words, when you get a cholesterol test and you look at the, is it normal or is it abnormal? You're basically comparing yourself to a, what is called a standard. And that standard is constructed with the notion that everybody's cholesterol should be the same. Nothing, nothing is further from the truth. Everybody has a different quote unquote normal cholesterol, give or take. So just getting your cholesterol done and have knowing your total cholesterol is really, uh, in some respects, can be quite misleading um, and, and, and not useful. Um, then, of course, the shorthanded HDL and LDL factors, high density and low density, is a, is a, is a, a, a short uh, a way of trying to understand healthy and unhealthy cholesterol, but it doesn't really work because both of them are necessary. Both of them are necessary. Um, and the triglyceride 
uh, two HDL ratios uh, is 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 important um, to look at, not just total cholesterol. Well, that's Fasting. a lot. That's a lot to absorb, Paul. And some of it, it is, is. It is. is fairly but I, I wanted to get some of those myths out there. Bottom line is, um, uh, you know, the cholesterol in and of itself is simply not an essential factor when it comes to pre uh, uh, predicting heart disease. And again, uh, kind of technical on some of that. So I'll tell you what, if you want to find out more and maybe have that explained a little bit more fully to you, get healthy at acunatural.com. Get healthy at acunatural.com. Go to acunatural.com 24 seven for good health information. So, so let's, let's go to Dennis. Dennis uh, was experiencing, he had diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure. Uh, and, um, and, and let's, let's listen to him. He, he ultimately came, got evaluated with the nutrition response testing method and uh, um, uh, experienced w what it is that I'm conveying to you. So here we go. Part one of Dennis's story, his road to better health. So thank you so much for calling. And I just want to... I just wanted to uh, echo what you just got finished saying and, uh, and how it's impacted me. I actually ran into you at a convention center, and uh, and I uh, wanted to talk to you about my child who has autism. Uh huh. And uh, uh, and it took about uh, I, I almost at a glance I could tell that uh, that you 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 saw some concerns uh, with me. You did uh, a, a quick evaluation, which you know I don't know if it's you 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 have that specific term that you use. But, uh, but I just call it Chinese reflexology. I mean, there's, there's something that you can tell. It's tried and true in the, in the ancients. It's uh, uh, something exciting that, uh, that you've adapted for today. And, uh, and, it's, and uh, you, you invited me in. I, uh, I took a couple of, uh, of, uh, of those, uh, that test. And then you're able to do an evaluation. I have uh, type 2 diabetes, which I had first when I was 44. I just turned 49, uh, right. and of course I had uh, high cholesterol. And uh, uh, you did a uh, uh, you, you prescribed the uh, the appropriate supplements, not a like you said, not a cookie cutter solution. And um, and my blood sugar dropped from oh it was it, it run ran 170 to 190, and it was down below 110 <laughs> within. A week. Right. Now, the other thing that the other thing that I, I did, too, of course, was to recommend a, a specific diet for you. And and um, and I asked you in the beginning, I said, were you willing to stop eating all grains, all fruit and all sugar for I that was ruthless? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but but you're absolutely right. The, the question is, uh, what, what do I want? I mean, is it just because I would like a strawberry waffle or is it more important to, to live a happy and healthy life for my family. And, uh, and of course, you know, the, the, the diet was something that you just take ownership of, and, and that's what I did. And I took ownership of the diet, and I took uh, ownership of the regimen, and, um, and sure enough, you know, if, if, if it works, it works. It's value, doesn't it? Right. Well, I, I mean, if, if you could just, let's, let's go back to the, to the beginning a little bit. And I remember when we met, and, I, and I, what I, one of the things that I saw was your, you know, was your, um, you know, genuine concern about, uh, you know, about your son. And, um, and, and I know, I know I've worked with so many parents with children and, and, you know, one of the things that parents often don't think about is that in order to, to really support and give to, to their family, that, that, that they need to be well. And I think that was something you recognized. I mean, that was something you hooked onto, right? Absolutely. And and because of that, and and you also had you clearly had a desire not to get caught up in the in the uh, you know in the pharmaceutical you know uh, uh, world. Well, let's face it. I mean, I, I don't want to make myself sound out to be some kind of hero. I just want to see something resolved. I I don't have all the answers. Um, uh, and uh, and if I've been trying something for four years, and. And like you said, if you're if you're not getting anywhere, then why do I think doing the same thing is going to continue 
uh, is going to get a different result. Right. <laughs> Why, if you if you keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result, that's right. what that's that's what we call insanity. At least you know it's a, it's, <laughs> it's a pretty good definition. But but you also preferred. You know, you recognized. You also recognized. I think when we talked, and you know, let me know if I'm if I'm, uh, you know, not correct here. But I mean, when you do drugs, you 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 are going to experience side effects. Whether those side effects occur, you know, immediately after taking them, or whether they occur. I don't qualify. I don't do drugs. But the pharmaceuticals that uh, that were uh, right really prescribed by a physician. Yeah, that, of course we're not. <laughs> Hey, this is a family show. I mean, you, you see that uh, you know that the, the pharmaceutical drugs are are chemicals that have side effects, which in other cultures are referred to as poison. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, but you're right. Those cholesterol medicines that I was taking, I was I, I I was dragging myself out of bed every morning. Yeah, energy, lack of energy. And, and and that has, of course, completely turned around. Yeah, and and I think that's one of the biggest things. I mean, I think a lot of people, um, you know, when they begin to experience sort of this, uh, you know, slow or maybe even dramatic decrease in uh, in their energy, I mean, life is the quality of life begins to uh, uh, unravel. Don't you think? Well, it's it's almost like a stunt being pulled against you. Right. I mean, what's the point? Dennis, Paul's patient on Health Matters with Paul Rosen. By the way, Paul, that paraphrase of yours, you were actually paraphrasing Albert Einstein. He's the one who said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. Well, how do you like that? Yeah. How about that? That's pretty high toned. <laughs> but, it, but it speaks to the point that maybe there are people out there, perhaps like Dennis, who got wise eventually, but they're just trying methods that have not worked in the past, thinking, well, if I just try harder, maybe this time it'll work. Yeah, and, and if you're, uh, again, if you think taking supplements is going to get you well on their own, the likelihood of your being as successful as you should be is so low. It's so low. And, you know, the more stories you read about a particular food, and its advantage for you or particular supplement and its advantage for you. Th these are all pieces, not, none of which, unless you have the technology available to you to be able to identify with a, an extreme level of certainty, your unique needs as an individual. It really makes a difference. And that's one of the things that Dennis, you know, he said, uh, I was ruthless about eliminating for him as a diabetic and for all diabetics, by the way, that's where you would start as far as a diet is concerned, eliminating all fruit, you know, all grain and all sugar. Maybe not for the rest of your life, but for an extended period of time. I'm impressed with Dennis, too. He sounds like a pretty focused guy. So once he was brought to the light and was made to understand he had to individualize his treatment, let's call it, I think he got really good results. Well, of course he did. Yeah, and he was, he, he was willing to do it, and he did it. And the same thing for me. I've gotten great results. But the thing is... I was is, uh, to do it, and I did it. Again, that and focus. The, you, you, yeah. have to, you have to have that, that directness to get yeah. to where you want to be. But it's just a need. I mean, if you want to be healthy and you want to to uh, avoid uh, disease or at least succumbing to a disease, a chronic disease, it's not that hard. But you have to make significant lifestyle changes. And those changes are based on you as an individual. They're not just general changes generally do this or generally do that. That's if, if you want the full benefit and, 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 and feel better than you've felt in a long time. 
One way to start, get healthy at AccuNatural.com. That's get healthy at AccuNatural.com. Go ahead and write to Paul at that email address with your questions. If you'd like to expand on our topics today or any health question that you have, AccuNatural.com, of course, is available 24-7 for information, and it's a great site for that. Also, podcast editions of the show. Click on the podcast tab. You can also find us on Facebook and YouTube. Shall we hear more of Dennis? Thank you. Okay, here we go. Part two of Dennis's story. Let me ask you this, Dennis. I mean, was the evaluation, the nutrition response testing evaluation, was that painful? Oh, no. No, it's that. Uh, in fact, you're, you're wondering what's going on. Trust me, there, there's, there's nothing. Uh, there are no machines. There's no x-rays. There's no, uh, nothing invasive. Uh, there is, uh, you know, you, you wonder exactly what's going on when you're having us. You're, you're basically just resisting and then uh, and then you're able to touch different parts of the body kind of like an acupuncture person would would, would touch and then be able to evaluate uh and uh, am i way off when i called it uh, a little bit of chinese reflexology no actually it's there is a lot of uh you know uh, oriental medicine in it uh, you know we, we call it nutrition response testing it is it is rooted in in something called the um, you know uh, kinesiology or right or muscle testing but but yeah, absolutely. These these um, the, the 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 areas, the points that we're touching, are are in in Western parlance reflexes. And you know, from my particular perspective, I I refer to them as acupuncture, you know, points or areas, if you will. And and by by utilizing the body's own autonomic nervous system, we're able to find out its status. And, it, okay, and another thing, I mean, I've had a certain amount of uh, exposure to. Uh, to certain alternative medicines, uh, just in in dealing with my uh, my child with autism. Right. The uh, uh, the thing that impressed me about you, because I I, re I retain my own, and I'll just be straight up, my own Western. I don't want to call it prejudice, but there's a uh, a reluctance to just say, you know, the the guru esque effect of many right. uh, alternative medicines. You look at it, and just go, oh right. The fact that you were once an attorney. <laughs> I mean, seriously, your, your background. Oh no! Oh no! It's out! It's out! My history's out. <laughs> is, is, is is very refreshing, and and I hope I'm not insulting anybody who has that. I, I, I'm actually accusing myself of saying yes. I have. I'm 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 reluctant to just wink and nod at at every bag of uh, you know, you know some sort of Indian flower or whatever that, you know, is going to make you all better. Yeah, I mean, various types of approaches. And I, you know, I mean, the bottom line, Dennis, I think one of the things that we, we, uh, you know, uh, had some affinity for was, I mean, no one's, no one was a bigger skeptic of this work than I was. Exactly. No one, <clears throat> you know, with my, with my background and anybody who is actually, um, and your, and your book goes into that and that is very, uh, that's very refreshing. And, uh, was that helpful? Yes, absolutely. The book was helpful yeah. to you? Good. And so, so let me ask you, so you, you know, immediately you saw some reaction and you're sticking with your, your, your program, you're right. doing your program and you're doing your, uh, you know, your, your, your diet, you're getting the results, right? Right. So, I mean, what, what would you, what would you recommend to anybody out there if they were interested in taking control of their health? Well, the most important thing is to, uh, is to ask, first of all, you know, is it working? And it's not just, you know, pragmatic and all that, but let's let's get down to it. I mean, if you are getting, if you're maintaining, if you're in a rut, if that's all you're doing, is that all you want? I mean, those are important questions to ask. Right, right. And especially, you're you're referring to what you were doing before you actually came to the exactly, test. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or do you want a light at the end of the tunnel? And uh, and do you really believe that you can get better? Yeah. I've seen people going into your office. Who are you know literally on you know walkers and canes and, and all that? I mean, uh, you have uh, you have expect people come in with expectations uh, because not because you know uh, there's anything miraculous, but because it's a, it's almost as though the body requires nutrition to get better, and our current system does not provide nutrition. Ouch! Oh my God! Wait, revelation. We're talking newsflash here. The body requires proper nutrition in order to function properly. Holy moly. What a concept. <laughs> hey, maybe we ought to write a book about that. What do you think? <laughs> 
Hey, Dennis, thank you so much for calling in and, uh, and, and sharing um, you know your experience. I really, really appreciate it. It's very difficult to get people out there to you know to kind of reach out a little bit um for a lot of the reasons you mentioned um thank you so much paul and uh and uh your your enthusiasm your uh it's your you're not just a uh, uh somebody who takes ownership of this area of of education and uh, and and nutrition you are uh your 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 approach is very warm you, i feel like you care about whether or not I'm getting better, and that is very encouraging. Thank you so much. Hey, you're totally welcome, and I do, and thank you so much for calling, Dennis. Dennis, Paul's patient, successful patient on Health Matters with Paul Rosen. Get healthy at acunatural.com is where you can reach Paul 24-7. Get healthy at acunatural.com and visit acunatural.com too to find out things that you may not have known before about how to improve your health. I like Paul Dennis's reference to an acupuncture person. As you may go to a doctor person, (laughs) you may go to an acupuncture person. You are so beautiful. Referring to, I I have no idea, but but an acupuncturist is what you are. Is that right? That's among I'm an acupuncturist in your skills. Yeah, that's right. And you mentioned you were involved in the legal profession at one time. Oh my gosh! Do you have to raise that? Well, I'm just saying. Yes, I I, I practiced law in uh, in Boston. Uh, Massachusetts for uh, almost seven years. Well, this is a man with qualifications, uh, Paul Rosen. And I'm glad to <laughs> no, see... the uh, qualifications, the real qualifications are when I say I can do something, it gets done. That's the real qualifications. And that's that's what anybody who who is willing to take my challenge, call the office. And by the way, if you mention... The fact that you heard me either on the radio or uh, via YouTube or via Facebook, uh, you know, uh, we will give you a discount off of the uh, normal price for an evaluation. And um, I mean, you know, that's just kind of a business thing, but I'm just trying to lower the barrier a bit for folks uh, to actually take control. Well, that's Don't good, you and think it's, it's time for you to take control of the quality of your life for real. Stop wasting money on supplements that don't work, on diets that don't work, on you know various types of uh, theories that don't work. I mean, I don't know about you, but I just got tired of it, and here I am today that many years later, doing well, doing really well. So as Paul uh, referenced there, you can go to Facebook, type in Paul J. Rosen, and you can get information from Paul, including, again, audio from the show. Or Acunatural. com. A-C-U natural.com always has that. And yeah, Acunatural has a Facebook uh, page too. So on Paul's personal site, as well as the business site on Facebook, you can get all that. And then we're on YouTube too, for better or worse. There we are. You can watch the video. There we are. Yep, there we are. exactly right. So you have another patient who achieved some success. A great deal of success, as a matter of fact. Yeah, do we have time for... uh... Sure. His name is Don. Is that correct? Yep. All right. So shall we hear the beginning of his story? Sounds good. Here we go. Can we go back, you know, sort of rewind the... Rewind history a little bit, uh, and um, how how did you originally uh, come to uh, come to, uh, to 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 get your uh, evaluation with nutrition response testing? Well, a very good friend of ours, uh, Marilyn, had talked to Judy at church, and um, Judy had had some challenges, and so she had mentioned to Marilyn uh, how she had worked to find someone like you, Paul, and she did, and she went to your program and has been really blessed by the results. So Marilyn and I thought, my goodness, I guess it's time for us to, uh, to make the step. And, and, and if you don't mind, um, you know, for those folks out there thinking that, you know, uh, this is only good for, uh, you know, kids and 30 year olds, uh-huh. um, uh, you know, both you and your, your wife are uh, in your senior years. I call Marilyn my child bride, <laughs> and, uh, but 
but I am 81. You're 81, and, and you have a fairly extensive medical history, don't you? Well, I do have. I had many years ago, about 20 years ago, I had prostate cancer, and then about nine years ago I had six bypass heart surgery, and then the year after that I had a, a very severe stroke and was totally paralyzed on the left side, but thanks to a very uh, fine neurosurgeon at the hospital, uh, I was able to regain that strength, and after some rehab, why, I, hey, I feel good. <laughs> I'm anxious about what this program's doing for Marilyn and myself. And 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 you you were also when you when you came to see me. And by the way, I want to give a um, you know a a very heartfelt nod to uh, you know two of the uh, Western docs out there. Uh, the acute life saving uh, care. You know, capacity is just extraordinary, and the technology that we have is extraordinary. And, of course, you wouldn't be around, uh, you know, had it not been for that, right? That's correct. That's very true. Um, but, but of course, it would be great if we could get the information out to people before, you know, they became a train wreck, don't you think? Oh, my. <laughs> what a difference it would What a difference it would make. No question about that, Paul. So... Okay, so so we set the stage. Oh, and you were also on uh, quite a few medications, were you? I was, yes. As I recall, you came to one of my uh, one of my public talks. Oh yes, that's right. That was our first first step. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And and you 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 know you heard you you listened you you uh, decided to to take the step and get the nutrition response testing evaluation. And what I mean was there anything about you know, about it that caught your attention? I mean, what, what, what kind of caught your attention? I mean, was it just, a, was it just the, the referral from someone who had been doing well, or was it more than that? Well, it was more than that because uh, Marilyn and I have, uh, we have a lot going on in our life, and uh, Marilyn has all kinds of energy, which I haven't had, and I'm trying to keep up with her, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is a challenge. But uh, then it, when we went to your little seminar, and uh, I volunteered to be uh, That's a right. member, and when you went through the process and what I felt and experienced there, uh, just really uh, uh, and almost immediately convinced me that I needed to, uh, to get involved in your program. It, it made sense, didn't it? It really did. I mean, it was unusual, and the whole idea of the muscle testing and all of that sort of seems a little bit... You know, okay, let's be brutally honest, a little far-fetched. Oh, no question. You know, yeah, most people probably aren't going to pick up on this because it's not the traditional way necessarily. But I've found in my lifetime that it's not the traditional ways that are the most uh, effective. I remember you I remember you, uh, you uh, uh, shared that with me. And so, so you came, you got the evaluation, both you and your lovely wife, Marilyn, and... And then you, you, you were given uh, your nutritional healing program, which essentially consisted of uh, some dietary changes, fairly, fairly radical dietary changes. Oh, yes, very much so. And also uh, the need for taking some, uh, some supplements. Um, and, and so, so, so you, you, you started it, and we, we stayed in contact with you. I mean, did you feel like you had you know, the support going in? Every week. And that's what's important because without the support, it'd be probably very difficult to maintain this type of program. Well, speaking of too late to never change, that's Don Paul's 81-year-old patient who found his way to better health. That's impressive, Paul, the fact that at a certain age after serious health problems, the man said he had cancer at one time and everything else, he found a way to make himself better. It is pretty amazing, really, but oh my gosh. Talk about medical wreckage. <laughs> well, still, you know, the man, uh, again, like I said, he found a way to turn that around for himself. So yeah. good for him yeah. after yeah. suffering such extreme uh, health problems. We got problems. a conclusion to, uh, to Don that folks... We do, we do, and then the story only gets better. So let's hear part two and the final part of Don's story. And so, uh, you know, what, what result with being on the program? I know you had some immediate result with the energy and i also know that there was some other sort of pretty startling results well i it seems like i can get back doing some things that i hadn't been able to do before and i'm looking forward to to doing more and from an exercise standpoint what about those blood pressures i'm trying to 
Oh, and then, then I, I've been keeping record of the blood pressure, and I'm amazed that uh, hey, it's good. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's good. It's in the one one twenties, one thirties over. Yeah, it's and and without that's without the medication that you've been taking for thirty years. That's correct. Gee, how'd that happen? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> perhaps I'm looking fe- forward to a lot more. Perhaps feeding the body what it actually needs with well, respect. I'm sure that's true. We, yeah. We, it's amazing how we can abuse our bodies and take advantage of uh, here. And our body has the ability to really take care of ourselves if we let it. Uh, absolutely. I mean that that really is the key. You know when it when it comes down to it. I mean is is if you knew if you knew that there was a way to actually identify the specific the individualized you know, uh, underlying root causes of what was going on. I mean, wouldn't that be a, uh, a, a, you know, a, a, uh, you know, a vital choice? Oh yeah. That's a no brainer. That's just, that's for certain. It's a no brainer. And I want to take this time to thank you, Paul and your staff for, for the program and for helping Marilyn and myself. Well, I, I, I will tell you that, that, you know, it, with meeting people like you makes it a joy to do what I do because well, no, I'm, I'm, I, and I'm, I'm being, Totally heartfelt, totally serious about that. Because at the end of the day, you know we're definitely paddling upstream here. <laughs> Big time. Right. Uh, right? Uh, I've been there. I've been, in my lifetime, I've done that before. I know you have. And I know that's why you appreciate it. Yeah. So what would you say to anybody out there who actually, you know, was struggling or wanted to handle, uh, you know, handle their health concerns safely, naturally, and effectively? What, what would you say? If you have, if you have the discipline to uh, get involved in Paul's Paul's program and follow it as he outlines and suggests, and stay in tune with with Paul and the staff, uh, I just I'm just certain that uh, virtually everyone would be amazed at what can happen in uh, their own health program. And and that, that would that would of course include the uh, nutrition response testing um, technology, wouldn't oh, it? Oh yes. What would you say about that? Amazing. That the testing is absolutely amazing, and I w- would recommend that to anyone. Cool, cool. Thank you so much for calling, Don. Oh, good time. I, I know that you don't have to take the time to do this, and I am am grateful for 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 your willingness to share with other folks who might be, um, you know, who I'm certain are suffering in so many ways and would like to use safe, natural, and effective means of dealing with it. Don, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Again, thank you, Paul, and your staff. Have a great day. All right. Thanks for calling. You're welcome. You know, he sounds more lively than I does, Don, <laughs> your 81-year-old patient. He sounds like he has more optimism and more energy and, and all I those know. things. I yeah, know. I, I I'm, an, I'm an optimistic guy, and I, <laughs> I generally have energy, but I don't know. I don't think I'd take uh, him on in a thumb wrestling contest or anything. Well, you know, imagine surviving – uh, uh, sex tuple bypass surgery and stroke and oh my actually gosh. no I can't and and yeah. right there is proof that that you can so uh, Don benefited a lot and I think everybody else could too well next week surviving COVID-19 the latest research reveals a surprising conclusion nutrition is more critical to your survival than we think Studies from around the world reveal three steps you can take to enhance your chances of surviving exposure to this virus. Tune in next week for those three steps. In the meantime, you ate your way to illness and you can eat your way to wellness. Remember, it's the food, folks. Keep yours fresh.